<clears throat> well, it turns out we actually do have fairly good random sample data on homosexual priests because during the 2002 uh, wave of uh, acknowledgement of sex abuse, the Los Angeles Times, which has a, a, a world-class uh, survey research um, uh, department, uh, did a survey of Catholic priests. They sent out surveys to 5,000 Catholic priests, uh, randomly sampled nationwide. This was the second time they had done this. They did a similar survey in 1993. And they asked them a spate of questions uh, related to the clergy sex abuse. And one of them was a question about their homosexuality. Uh, I won't go into the validation of this uh, uh, study uh, here, but I do it a lot in the paper. Uh, this survey was used uh, by Andrew Greeley in his book in 2002 called Priests, A Calling in Crisis. Um, it, I, I wrote the review for con contemporary sociology for that book, and uh, I, did, I didn't say a lot of really good things about that book, so uh, I'm, I'm retracting some of that now to say that it, the data is uh, more useful than um, I may have said at that time. Um, it was also used by Dean Hoagie in his book, um, Evolving Visions of the Priesthood in 2003. I used it in my 2015 book uh, that you heard about a minute ago on married Catholic priests. So there's some good uses for the, these data um, on Catholic priests. In the survey, they asked a, a question about homosexual orientation using what we call the modified Kinsey scale. Uh, it measures sexual orientation ranging from um, uh, completely heterosexual to completely homosexual uh, with categories in between. Kinsey used a seven-point scale. They reduced it to a five-point scale, which is commonly done. Uh, and so it's a pretty uh, valid, uh, replicated measure of homosexual activity. By this measure in 2002, 15.2% .2 of Catholic priests reported that they were homosexual. To uh, identify homosexual, I combine categories four and five, uh, as is commonly done. So we have uh, men who have a, an exclusively or a predominantly homosexual orientation. Well, here are the results um, that uh, we can see. The, the bars will tell you the percent of homosexual men that were ordained in that five-year period. And you can see that starting in the uh, 1940s. I don't know if this will help or not. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Starting back here in the 1940s, you have what we might call the, the um, default or resting rate, which is uh, somewhere around 3 or 4% uh, of the priests that were ordained in those years reported in 2002 on this survey that they were homosexual in orientation. And then it started to rise. In the 1950s, you get a higher percent. By the time you get to the 1960s, over one in five priests who are ordained uh, report that they're homosexual in orientation. Uh, in the 1980s, remember those reports of all that activity in the seminaries? So that's the high point. Uh, one in three priests ordained in the first half of the 1980s. Uh, report a homosexual orientation. If I showed this to you in single year bars, you'd see a lot of variation, but you'd see some, some years in which it went very high. The highest uh, r r rate of homosexual ordination was in 1983. We had 50%, half of all the Catholic priests ordained in that year, uh, reported a homosexual orientation. Uh, and then it has started to decline. Now, this line here, uh, it, it captures not the percent ordained in any year, but the overall effect of those ordinations. And so this is the percent of men at each of these points uh, who were homosexual in the priesthood as a whole, not just newly ordained. And so it, in the early 1980s, 15% of all Catholic priests who were active and serving in the United States uh, were homosexual. Uh, as projected by these survey findings, it went up a little bit uh, in the late 1980s. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what it has done since that time as part of, uh, part of the third part. <clears throat>